Reducing Fractions To reduce fractions, simplify or write in lowest terms, one can divide out common factors. If it is a difficult fraction with large numbers or includes variables, you may wish to write it out in primes. Let's look at our first example. Reduce 60a to the 6b squared over 28a squared b to the 5th. So this is a rather large problem and it has variables. So let's go the route of breaking to primes. I'm going to do that on the side. So first of all for 60, it ends in a 0. So I could use 6 times 10 and 6 is 2 times 3 and 10 is 2 times 5. So 2 times 2 times 3 times 5. That will go on my numerator. For my variables, I will just write out what the exponent means. So a to the 6 means 6 copies of the a. So 6 a's and b squared means 2 b's. And then for my denominator, I have 28. For me, 28 I think of 4 times 7. If you don't think of that, it ends in an even digit, so there is a 2 in there. We'll keep going. So for 4, there's 2 times 2, and 7 is a prime. So we have 2 times 2 times 7. I have a squared, so that will be a times a, and b to the fifth, so that will be 5 b's. Once you have all products, then you're going to divide out common factors. So anything that matches up, you can divide out. So I will divide out a 2 and another 2. I can't do anything with the 3 and the 5 or the 7 because there's no factor in the other place to match. Um, the variables will match up exactly the same. So you have to match up 1 to 1. That's all the a's you can take because you don't have any more in your denominator. I have two b's in the numerator, so I'll take two of the b's off down here. And now I'm going to put it back together. So on my numerator, I have 3 times 5. Now I can multiply them back. For my variables, I have 1, 2, 3, 4 a's. That will be a to the 4 and no b's. My denominator, I have a 7, and we have 3 b's. That will be b to the 3rd. You will leave it here. Don't change 15 over 7 to a mixed number. You would rather have just one piece. So this is our final answer, guaranteed to be in lowest terms. Let's look at another example. So we're going to reduce 20x squared over 36x. You might remember that these are some numbers we did in the prime number video. So we'll break them down. 20. We could use 4 and 5. And 4 is some 2's. So 2 times 2 times 5. x squared will be 5 x squared will be x times x. On the denominator, 36. 36 I think of 6 times 6, and then 6 is 2 times 3, and 2 times 3, and then just put them back in order. 2 2's and 2 3's, and we have 1 X. And then we're just going to match up and divide out our common factors. So a 2 will divide out, another 2 will divide out, and an x will divide out and then we'll put it back together. On the numerator we have 5 and x, so 5x. Denominator 3 times 3 is 9 and there are no x's left. Now we're not trying to make these more difficult than they need to be. If you are used to reducing fractions and you have a simple one like 6 over 10 
and you see that these have a common factor. They're both even. So you could divide both by 2. There is nothing wrong with doing that in your head. So if you divide the numerator by 2, 6 divided by 2 is 3, and the denominator, 10 divided by 2 is 5, you're reduced. There's nothing wrong with that. It should work, though, with the primes. If it doesn't, then the primes are no good if they don't work all the time. So let's break it to primes just to check. So if we do 6, 6 is 2 times 3. And 10 is 2 times 5. Now we have products, and we have all primes. We can divide out the common factor, and we get the same answer. So you certainly could do primes all the time, but if it's simple and you can see the answer, then it is okay to do some in your head. Let's look at another example. This one also is simple. Reduce 5 over 10. Uh, these do have a common factor of 5. One ends in 5, one ends in 0. So you can divide by 5. So 5 goes into 5 one time, and 5 goes into 10 two times. So 5 tenths is equal to 1 half. It is necessary to write the 1 in the numerator. Remember, you are dividing. If we did this by primes, 5 is already prime, and 10 is 2 times 5. So your common factor is the 5, but you are dividing. If everything divides out of the numerator, remember you have to write the 1. Let's look at another simple one. 10 divided by 2. You could just see that as a division and say the answer is 5, which would be correct. If you're doing it as a fraction, they're both even, so there is a common factor of 2. You can divide by 2. 10 divided by 2 is 5. And 2 divided by 2 is 1. It is not necessary to write a 1 in the denominator. Remember, we had to write it if it landed in the numerator. We do not have to write it in the denominator. Uh, if we did these by primes, 10 is 2 times 5 and 2 is prime, the 2 would divide out, and you're left just with 5 over 1 or 5. So you don't have to write a 1 in the denominator. We'll look at one more problem to reduce. 9 over 6. Um, this does have a common factor of 3, so we could just divide that out. 9 divided by 3 is 3, and 6 divided by 3 is 2. Or if we did primes, you have 3 times 3 and 3 times 2. Divide out your common factor, and you're left with 3 over 2. In algebra, we're going to leave it there. We would prefer just one piece most of the time. In general, we leave improper fractions in algebra rather than changing to mixed numbers. You should always reduce fractions to lowest terms. If you don't see a common factor right away, write the prime factorizations. It doesn't take that long, and then you can be certain that you have reduced to lowest terms.